Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to the Her Story Collaborative. My name is Jen Buck, and I'm your host here in the collab. I'm a professional speaker, executive strategist, author of five books, and a nonprofit founder. My speaking and training business is focused on advocating, activating, and amplifying high-performing women. And that's what the Her Story Collaborative is all about, trailblazing women who are changing their little corner of the world. Now, today, my guest is a glass ceiling breaker, Pam Royal. Pam is all about reinvention. Beginning as a high school teacher in the early 60s, she moved into radio as a DJ, followed by a job in television as an on-air talent in Chicago. In the 80s, she started a home care agency, which grew to nine branch offices, and she employed over 500 caregivers and staff. Pam co-founded a 100-voice women's competing chorus and sang in international competitions in a barbershop quartet. At 62 years old, Pam reinvented herself again when she became a road warrior and traveled all around the country training tens of thousands of women in management and communications on the National Women's Conference. She has served on numerous boards, coached a number of CEOs, and has served as an advisor to a variety of nonprofit organizations. She's an author as well as the creator of an audio series on life balance. And at the age of 82, she's currently working for an immigration law center that is helping immigrants on their path to citizenship. Welcome to the collab, Pam. Oh, Jen, it is so good to see you again. Yes. This makes me so happy. And I just am so grateful because you have been, for me, someone who has really changed the trajectory of my life. And I don't say that to people often, you know, you've really been someone that has changed me. And so to have you here. To well, have- but I remember the first time we met in a parking lot and you were scared to death. It was going to be the most boring trip ever. Uh huh. And that was right after nine 11. It was, and- it was. And I remember we all wanted to help any way that we could, right. We were all, yes working as speakers. And we got the call that they, you know, we couldn't travel by air. And so I got a call just like you did that they (laughs) needed a group of women to go down to Texas. And both of us were in the Missouri area at the time. And so we were supposed to meet all of these strangers in the parking lot and drive 12 hours down to Texas 12, it was 17 hours, my 17. darling. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh gosh. Yes. 17 hours. 17 hours. And I was, I almost literally quit two or three times. Oh, that, that I didn't know. <laughs> because I did not want to do this. I thought who in the world. Well, you were in your twenties. I was in my sixties. Yep. yep. And it didn't look on the, on the surface of it, that it would be a good trip. It could no. be a could have been a disaster. Do you remember we all brought like crossword puzzles and books yes. and things? Yes. And if it's yes. this awkward, weird yes. 17 hour yes. drive, like we're going to have to figure this oh, out. Yes. And instead, the three of us in the car met and fell in love with each other and had the trip of it was life. the most amazing trip. Uh, and I think because it was such an opportunity, first of all, to meet two women I'd never met before. But second, we came from three different generations. Yeah, uh, You were in your 20s. Candy was in her, I think, early 40s. I was in my 60s. Yeah. And our sharing of resources and information and what we brought to that conference, I think, was really um, unique and, uh, and inspirational for all of us. It, it was. was. Really amazing. It was. And I remember realizing like just being so clear. And I think, you know, as an American, this was, this was a marker in time for us. Yes. And I remember being so clear that not only was this a marker in time for the country, but it was a marker in time for me because it was magical. There was something so important. And I was so aware of what was occurring that week. And it literally changed me, you know, to learn what I did to have the support of you two women to then create these lifelong friendships with the two of you. Right. This was a marker for me. So you're sort of my, you know, before Pam marker, and then there's <laughs> marker. So that's a good thing, right? It's a great thing. It's a great thing. But for me, watching you evolve and grow and become this magnificent, um, inspirational person has been it's like when you're you're my little child. You're, you're my yeah. you're my you're my success story. Oh. I just uh, just think Thank you're great. 
thank you for that. You know, this, this whole idea of the Her Story Collaborative is really about making sure that not only we give women, you know, ideas and tips and, and inspiration on how to maybe navigate through some of the right. tough times in their life, but I like to highlight women who are just killing it. And the right. more I thought about the women that I interview, I thought, you know what? I need the glass ceiling breakers because the success that we are experiencing right now is due to the work and effort and, and fight that you all put in to get into those CEO roles, to break those glass ceilings. And I just thought this was important. It's really interesting that you, that you selected that as a, um, as a theme going through some of your programs, because from my perspective, my generation has been the, the generation that started out not even knowing there was a glass seeing, just accepting mm -hmm the, you know, the, the, the eight foot tall ceiling in your living room yes and evolving and learning and fighting against all of that to um, it's just been wonderful to see some of the women break out and really succeed. I'm, I'm so impressed with many of them. Yeah. And you are one of them, you know, you made cultural changes in your family life early on that were not yeah, traditional. You made huge strides, you know, having <laughs> 500 employees that you were in charge of and, right. and, you know, being this, this force in business and then going on in your later years to author, you know, two different publications and right. travel around the world. And, and that was an amazing experience. Incredible, yeah. incredible. And I just think that there's so much wisdom. You know, I always am saying that my job is to clear the shards of glass for the women who are coming after me, but it's also to revere the women who came before me, who actually broke the glass, you know, right. and that's you, that is you in a nutshell. Yeah. And um, I just think that we have so much to learn, you know, there is a lot and there's, and I'm so uh, impressed with so many women who have the uh, uh, strength is, is, is used too much in this format, but that, I don't I can't think of a better word to explain the ability to take emotion out of some things, mm -hmm. to be focused on goals, to be uh, straightforward in speech, to be willing to ask for what they want yeah. instead of accepting what was given. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, uh, it, watching women come up behind me has taught me a lot. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you you teach from the top, but you also learn from bottom up. Yes, positively. So, yeah. you started out as a teacher. You went into radio and television, and then you went into opening <laughs> up this care facility and it exploding into nine branches. Yeah. How yes. in the world did you always want to do something like that? I mean, how you know, that I thought about this a lot, um, and. And the, the many of the jobs that I've had, and I've had a wide variety of career experiences, mm -hmm. have often been because a path opened up and I took it because uh, something occurred that you went, oh, I'd like to do that. Okay. So I never had a specific goal in mind, but I recognized opportunity when it came mm -hmm. and then you just sort of latch on to it. And, and the, the success comes from attitude. I can't express enough about whatever job you're given. If you do it with the right attitude, it leads to different pathways yeah. to better places to be. Yeah. So to, to take a job of say filing timesheets or answering phones or whatever, all of those have led to extremely wonderful experiences and opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. What were you like as a little girl? Because I feel <laughs> like you had to have been this little rule breaker, you know, that was doing it your own way and, and carving new paths. What were you like? I was a wild child. I um, knew it. I knew I, it. I come from a very small town and it, my days were spent running through uh, empty fields singing zippity doo -dah. <laughs> Um, My mother would be after me all the time saying, 
because I, I would go to school in the morning and I'd have hat and coat and mittens and boots and books. And I would come home at lunchtime and I, my hands would be free and all of my friends would have my hats and coats and books and mittens yeah. and stuff. And she'd say, Pam, you, what are you doing? You have to carry your own stuff. But what a leadership opportunity. Somehow that fell into my lap here. You yeah. take it. They, they were perfectly willing to do it as long as I asked. Yeah. I didn't see the problem in that. <laughs> that is so funny. So, what did you think yeah. you grew up to be? Um, probably anything that had to do with helping people. Mm -hmm. I think there, for some reason in my heart, I think that it's important that, uh, that whatever you do has a positive influence or effect on people that you come in contact with. Mm -hmm. So that led me to teaching. It led me to um, my television radio experience were really uh, jobs where I felt that I, but I, I, I was always great. I always wanted to be a performer of some kind. Yeah. Uh, I was, and I've had some terrible experiences with that, by the way. Um, when I was in college, we took a trip to uh, Case Western uh, in Cleveland because at that point I wanted to be a so, uh, social worker. Mm -hmm. So we were in this huge room with probably a hundred students from different schools, colleges, and we'd been through all of this. And the lady was sort of finishing up her talk, her, her welcome, or her, her, her saying goodbye, whatever. And I thought she was done. Mm -hmm. So in typical Pam fashion, I raced to the center of that room and I said, everybody to the morgue over here. And she, but she wasn't done speaking. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So she said, um, they can do that when I'm finished. Oh my God. And I had to kind of creep back to my yeah. chair and sit down. Yeah. So I, I, a wild child. Yeah. A wild, wild child. child <laughs> always speaking out, uh, leading others. Yes. Two different Sometimes members. in the wrong direction, but sure. nevertheless. That happens. That's right. Yes. Nevertheless. Yes. And, and I know that from the time that I spent with you on the road, you are the eternal optimist. You're always looking for better ways to do something. I still yeah. to this day use some of the advice that you have used and taught me throughout the years. Never measure your worth by someone else's yardstick. Bingo. Which could not be yeah. more important right now right. as we are in the middle of this social media world and everything is about these sort of right. digitally retouched uh, ideas of who people right. are. And so I'm constantly reminding myself of that. But I also see that you're someone who is very committed. You know, it's not just about the leading and it's not just about the optimism yeah. and people laugh and happy. You're also really committed to making your community better. And you've done this by creating, you know, groups in your community. You are actively right. involved in Sweet Adelines. And you yes, I love that organization. I know you do. And I feel like I have... I've watched this over the last 20 years, you know. I dragged you in Las Vegas yep. to watch my daughter rehearse. Yes. Because they were getting ready to, to compete. Yes. And, um, but I'm a 45-year member of Sweet Adelines mm -hmm. and I've competed in a, 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 a quartet that we were four times at international competing. Yeah. And it, it just, it's, it's in my heart. I love the music. Yeah. I love the people and I've been able to meet people all over the world. So friends in Australia, New Zealand and mm -hmm. Sweden and Germany and every place. So it's, yeah. been, it's been an amazing adventure. Yeah. I love that you put that time into not only, you know, your hobby and what you love and filling your spirit, right. but you've also even created in your community. It was a, um, was it an acting troupe or something along we those had lines? We a repertory company. Yes. It was it started out as a neighborhood repertory company. Yeah. And it went for well, last all, well over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it had, by the time we were done, probably five or 600 people that had participated in it. Wow. And uh, we did it every year. Wow. Uh, it started out as a way to get away from our kids on Monday night because our yeah. kids stayed home sure. for Monday night football. Yeah. And none of the women at that point were interested in football. So we said, well, let's sing. Okay. So that's how the, sort of that evolved. I love and it. Uh, um, that was the, that, that's how the River Blenders, the, the, my sweet I like chorus started. Yeah. But then the repertory company was really a, a winter activity for parents 
who were stuck at home with, you know, nothing to do because you couldn't yeah. play golf, you couldn't play tennis, couldn't, you know, sure. do all the fun stuff. So I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So what did you, when you look back on your journey, what did yep. you love about the work that you chose? Um, well, I have to think about which work I chose because I chose so many of them and uh, which I think is, is really the most interesting part about me is that I did a lot of different, had a lot of different um, opportunities. Yeah. Chapters. So, but the, the thinking about, I learned that I was a great administrator when we started the home care agency. Um, I thought, well, this is interesting. This is, oh, never wanted to really work in an office, you know, to do, uh -huh. but I learned that I was a really good administrator. Mm -hmm. And when we started from scratch and then we grew and grew, eventually I was overseeing those nine branches. I hired all of those people, we all saw the training. Um, and it was, it was a great experience. It was yeah. just really. Yeah. What yeah. would you tell, what would you tell women about, you know, sort of what to hang their hat on or what to pay attention to or where to build awareness. You know, what do you think is important for women who are working in their life, living life right. uh, to pay attention to? Well, first of all, I would say attitude. I, I said that before. I think everything starts with attitude. The second thing is to make sure you, you are focused on what your skills are and to stick up for them. Yeah. You know, not to be sidetracked and not to be, let people get into your head mm -hmm. and tell you that you can't do things or that's not going to work or mm -hmm. um, you're, you're just a secretary. You're just an administrative assistant. That needs to get out of your head right away. Not to be afraid to ask for money. Mm. Not to be afraid to value your worth. Yes. Not to be afraid to uh, speak up in mm -hmm meetings and, and to share, think them through first, but share your thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big Hamilton fan. Yes. Same. Hamilton. And I love when Hamilton says to Aaron Burr, you know, what do you stand for? Because if you don't stand for anything, you, you'll fall. If you don't stand for something, something, you'll fall for anything. Yes. So you have to know what you stand for and be willing to defend that. Yeah. What did you stand for all these years, Pam? I think making sure other people were uh, in good space, yeah. that other people were, uh, I think you climb the ladder, if you will, by making sure that the people beneath you are successful. Yes. The more successful they are, the more successful you are. Yes. And, and to make sure that you have shored your staff up uh, and the people that work with you or for you mm -hmm. get the recognition that they deserve. Absolutely. And yeah. I know as your friend, that's who you are. Everyone. Yeah. It's not just who you yeah, are. I work. Hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What do you hope the next generation of women in business will achieve that maybe your generation hasn't yet? What would you like to see? Uh, well, equality for sure. Yeah. The ability to walk into a room and be accepted for your skill set, your education, your mm -hmm. ideas without saying, but she's a woman. Yeah. You know, that, that, that kind of disappears and goes away. I see it coming and I see women who are accepted, especially on the national level uh, on the, in the political arena, mm -hmm. that some of the women there are, um, are, are handling really important jobs and doing very well with them. Mm -hmm. So that I think is really critical. The more women we have doing that, mm -hmm. the more women we'll get. Yeah. One of the things I like to say in my business is kind of reminiscent of what we've heard uh, said by Ruth Bader Ginsburg when asked how many will be enough. On the <laughs> I, I often will say with a nod to that, that I'll be happy when I walk into a boardroom and I don't remark that there are one, two, three women on the board. Like I'll be right. happy when I don't have to do right. that. When there's parity, right. where there's equality, where right. it's not, you know, we see different generations, we see right. different genders, we see different cultures, we see different races. That's right. where, that's really what I hope 
to see right. moving forward. Because even for my generation, we're not there yet. You know, right. we're still well, celebrating the one or two women on the board, you know? Yeah. The other thing I, I would say is that I will give kudos and would hope for more men who support that yes. uh, vision. Yep. There Absolutely. are some of them now that really stick up and, and, and know that that's where we need to be, yeah. but we need more of those men. Yeah. We need our allies. Mm-hmm. We need yes. allies. And exactly. what that looks name. like is creating space. And, you know, yes. when we create space for more of us, we create success for all of us. That's yes. the whole purpose behind the yes. Her Story Collaborative, you know, is creating more space and we need our allies to help us do that. Right. So I want to transition right now into our sure. speed round questions. And so I'm oh, going to sure. ask you okay. some questions and you just okay. tell me what comes to you uh, top of mind and and we'll just bang these out. There's about 10 questions. Uh-oh. All right. Sound good. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. So if you got an hour to sit on the end of a park bench with your favorite woman in history, who would it be? El- Eliza Schuyler Hamilton. Oh, Eliza. <laughs> yes. I have her book, Dear Mr. Hamilton. Yes. Oh, do you really? Yes, I do. Yeah, yes, I know. I, I think she would be an amazing woman to talk with. 100%. Yep. Are you a sweet person or a savory person when it comes savory, to savory, savory yeah. all day long? Savory. I should have known that actually, since yeah. we became sort of the Queens of road food. <laughs> yes. Right. I, yes. I can go into any, any gas station and come out just absolutely set. And I, I feel yes. like all of you, yeah. I, I pretty much yep. know what I could yep. grab for you too. Sure. <laughs> Are you? Jerky. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. totally the beef jerky. So if you were to win the lottery, and I mean a big a big dollar amount on the lottery, what would your first spend be? My first spend. I think my first spend, my first thought would have to be what charity could I help most? I love that. And then after that would be my family, of course. Yeah. But I don't think I have a different perspective on what we owe people in this world and we somebody somebody said this recently and I loved it it wasn't we're born with how does it go born with something about not what's not what's coming to us is different than what we have an obligation to do Mm. and I believe in the obligation part yes yes I believe in the obligation part I agree. So you'd give it, you'd give it to a charity first. That's just beautiful. And I'm not surprised. Well, not all all of it, by the way, but most of it. (laughs) (laughs) I did say first. So you're good. You're good. Okay. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Never let them see you sweat. Hmm. Okay. I would agree with that fully. Yep. Yep. Do it anyway. Just kind of keep your, keep your, um, anxieties, your stress level under wraps. Yep. I agree. I totally love it. When you're processing something, are you more of a thinker, a talker or a doer? I think I'm a talker. Yeah. I think I'm a talker. I think I have to just get the words out. And as I, as I talk, it's processing. Yep. Yep. Same. This is why we love it. (laughs) Yes. This is why we can do 17 hour trips. Right. Yes. Right. Do you want? Do you like pineapple on your pizza? Of course. Yes. Who well, wouldn't? <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. So, what's your theme song, Pam? When you're going to do a keynote in front of thirty thousand people? Eye of the Tiger. <gasps> nice. That is. Yeah. Such a, that's such a goodie. Always. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Are you living past a hundred? One side of me says, God, I hope so. And the other side said, not a chance. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so we'll see what we'll see what life brings. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. What's the best word to describe you? Genuine. Yeah, I agree. Finish. I, I think oh, go ahead. A, Sorry, I had a good word. It is. I, 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 I think that's a good word because I try really hard to be the same person in every situation and to be um, that, that, that there's no room for phony phoniness or, or falseness or that you just need to be a genuine person. Yeah. Whoever you are is who you are. I agree. I agree. So. Last question. When yeah. I'm really, really old, I hope to see. 
I am really, really old, Chad. <laughs> uh, no, I will not allow this. Yeah. Um, so what was the question again? When I'm really, really old, I hope to see. Oh, my daughter is president. No. <gasps> Oh, Corey for president yes. all day. Corey for president. You know, she teaches um, civic. She teaches Supreme Court cases. She teaches um, the uh, pol uh, poli sci, all this to high school students. And I yeah. think she's just amazing. She is amazing. And I have loved watching her over the years yeah. as we've learned yeah. so much about what's going on in this country. Yeah. Because we've all gotten a deep dive, right? Yes, and we have. Mm -hmm. And yep. she has been incredible teaching us as a community as right. she's teaching kids, right? right. She's yep. incredible. She's right. I have to tell you, a friend of mine gave me an answer, or one of my guests gave me an answer. When I'm really, really old, I hope to see. And she said, I hope to see. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great answer. <laughs> I can great. relate to that. Yeah. I can relate to that. Completely. So yeah. Pam, do me a favor, if you will. Sure. Tell us where the people who are tuning in can find you because I think that you're one of those women that okay. everyone needs to know. And right. whether it's through getting coaching as you know a high-performing sure. executive, getting some type of, of direction, um, whatever it might be. And I think that you are someone that- a great that listener, by the way, if, if anybody wants to just vent. That's right. Uh, so can you tell us where to find you? Sure. There are several places. Uh, my email address for sure. It's pam.royal and the name, the last name is spelled R-O-Y-L-E. There's no A in it. Mm -hmm. So pam.royal at gmail.com will always reach me. I have a Facebook page again, by the same name, Pam Royal. Mm -hmm. And I, one thing I'm working on right now, Jen, is I'm putting together a campfire, what I call Pam's campfire. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to invite people from all walks of my life. Mm -hmm. People internationally, people locally, people that I've sung with, people that I've spoken with. And we're going to have a big Zoom meeting and we're going to just um, get together to meet new people and to be in uh, breakout rooms where we can talk about books, we can talk about um, music, we can talk about anything you want to talk about. Probably not politics, but maybe. Sure. We'll sure. see. Um, so anyway, so that's on that's on my horizon. Mm -hmm. And I have set up a Facebook page, which is Pam's Campfire. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's live yet. I'll have, I'll have to go and check, but um, that is coming. And if anybody wants to participate in that, they can certainly reach me at, at my email address. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I think it's so important that we create this space where we are bringing generations in. We're bringing different viewpoints and uh, oh, different sure. ideas in. And I just yeah. think that it's needed. And I, I fully... Yeah. Support Thank it. Thank God for Zoom. <laughs> Thank God for Zoom. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Well, this has been such a joy. And before we actually jump off, I want to make sure that I give a tip of the hat to our sponsor for the Her Story Collaborative. We've got an organization in Arizona that's called Go With the Flow. And Go With the Flow works with students who have been negatively impacted financially and who cannot get the period supplies that they need. So what happens is these students come to school and there's humiliation connected to not being able to handle some something that's very natural and very normal. So what Go With The Flow does is they create these period packs and they're darling. They're in little makeup bags that are so hip and so cute. And they give out literally thousands and thousands of bags to the schools who then pass them out to the students so that we don't have students who are being negatively impacted. What we know right now is that graduation rates are being severely impacted by these students who end up missing a week of school a month. Well, right. you can imagine what that does over four years time and missing a week of school a month isn't going to put you in a good position to graduate. And so this has helped on so many levels. And if you're out there interested in getting involved with Go With The Flow, you can go to gowiththeflowaz.org and they're always looking for donations and help. And to be a part of this organization is one that just sort of explodes your heart and, and you know you're doing the right thing. So Pam, I love yeah. you desperately. And this has been so much fun for me. And I admire you. I love okay. the trail that you have blazed, the glass ceilings that you have broken. And I am so clear that I am here in part because of you. So oh, you're, you're just, 
Wonderful, Jen. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Everybody else, we'll catch you in about a week. Take care. Thank you, Pam. Bye-bye.